everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have a very special guest today uh, who's going to tell us all about the, um, uh, the military side of nursing as well as her story to become a uh, military nurse. Uh, I want to welcome Lieutenant Nichols here with us today. How are you doing, Lieutenant Nichols? Great. How are you? Thank you for uh, allowing me to be in this video with you on your channel. All right. No worries. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell the uh, people out there watching a little bit about yourself. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Jaris Nichols, so Lieutenant Nichols. Um, I'm from South Carolina. I graduated from USC in 2015. Um, I'm a registered nurse and I work in critical care. Um, my whole nursing experience has been um, completely based around critical care. And I started off um, at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And um, I pretty much believe that's where I got a lot of my solid nursing foundation, which for nurses out there, I truly believe that's where you get the best experience in the workforce. Nursing school does prepare you, but you get the best experience when you're actually working. So I transitioned from the Mayo Clinic into military service um, in August. So I've currently been active duty Air Force, still as a critical care nurse for five months now. Um, and then I'm currently here in the Virginia area. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for your service. That's awesome that you, thank you. Are, you are doing this. Um, why um, the military and why specifically the Air Force? What, what made you, so you were a nurse before the Mayo Clinic and then what, what made you decide, was it just one day that decided I'm gonna join the, uh, the military and uh, be a nurse in the military. What made you decide to do that? Um, that's a million dollar question. I actually get asked that all the time, probably on like a regular basis. Um, so military runs in my family. So not only is it like tradition for me, yeah. I don't think that I necessarily had to do it because I had a very comfortable life on the outside in the civilian world, but it was more of an internal drive it was something that I knew that I always wanted to do. I wanted to wait till after I had my degree, of course, and I definitely wanted to have some civilian nursing experience to be able to have that comparison. And then um, I know it sounds cliche, but I definitely wanted to feel like I was doing more in the nursing field than just being a civilian nurse. I wanted to have that experience that I could help wounded warriors, I could help like drag soldiers off the battlefield. Like I had this idea that I was going to do so much for my country. So um, just family tradition and then my own like internal drive. Okay, awesome. Uh, tell us about that transition from nursing school to becoming a military nurse and officer. What is required uh, and kind of the steps that you took to uh, reach that? Um, okay, it is a very long process. So of course, um, nursing school in and of itself is very hard. It's very long, lots of tests and things like that. Um, ultimately, upon graduation, of course, um, all nurses know you have to pass the NCLEX. Okay. So I'm um, passing the NCLEX and then obtaining your, well, obtaining your bachelor's degree, of course, first, and then passing the NCLEX. That's the number one requirement in order to even be um, a registered nurse, of course. Um, and then there's two routes you can go. You can join the Air Force um, in the medical corps mm -hmm. without having experience and you can go through the nurse transition program, which that's where it's almost like being a new grad and they'll teach you, you'll start off on possibly like a med surge floor and things like that. Or if you get experience on the civilian side and you have at least a year of experience in that particular specialty, so in my case, critical care, then you can hold on to that specialty and then you can join and go straight into that continued specialty without mm -hmm. having to go through a new grad program. Okay. So definitely having a bachelor's, passing the NCLEX, and then it's up to you whether you want to get experience on the outside or not. And then once your packet is complete, as you work with your recruiter, the only thing that's required from the military side once you've been accepted is officer training, which is a five and a half week course at uh, Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. Okay, and how was that experience? Was that pretty challenging or, you know, people always give the Air Force a hard time about being so easy compared to the Army and the Marines. So how was that, that uh, officer? What is the name of the course that you required to take? It's called an officer's... Uh, right, um, so that course is, um, it's interchangeable. It's COT, so Commission Officer right. Training. 
and I've also heard people call it OTS, Officer Training School. Okay. Um, I always call it COT, so Commission Officer Training. And I don't want to step on any toes for anyone that might be listening or, or watching. Um, but I personally did find it very difficult because yeah. I have no prior military experience. So having to learn like military customs and courtesies, how to wear the uniform, how to salute, getting up at four o'clock every day, um, doing PT and then going to the classroom because on the officer side, they teach you a lot about leadership. Yeah. Um, so you have to learn to be a leader if that's not something that comes naturally to you. Um, so it's more, it was more difficult just in a fact, five and a half weeks does go by really fast. Yeah. So just getting up early, your days are very, very long from like four o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. It's, I found it to be very challenging, but it's very doable. And then the people that you meet, I think is really what makes the whole program just more enjoyable. Okay, uh, so it's kind of like boot camp. Did they did they yell at you guys and uh, make you get out of your bed and you had to make your bed a certain way and shine your boots? Is it similar to kind of boot camp for enlisted? From what I've heard, um, it's similar um, in certain aspects. We do have room inspections and we did have to make sure our beds are made a certain way, our clothes are folded a certain way. Um, and we did have to march in formation and we had to march a certain way. They did not really do a lot of yelling or in your face type things. Um, but they were very strict on just making sure we marched a certain way, marching in formation, making sure we knew the ranks, who to salute, when to salute, when not to salute, and those sorts of things. Okay. So you've been in the Air Force active duty for about five months now as a critical care nurse. How, how's your uh, time been so far? Um, my time so far has actually gone by really fast, and yeah. it's been a really great experience. The base that I'm on, my coworkers have been very welcoming. Um, my ICU here is a little slower paced than what I'm even used to at Mayo Clinic, but it's given me a good opportunity just to um, kind of see like how military does with their medical side, and then also kind of slowly ease me into the military world in and of itself because not only am I continuing into the nursing world but now I have to also adjust to military life so it's been um it's been a huge adjustment but it's been really nice having the co-workers that I have okay and what are some some differences that you've seen between like your military nursing versus civilian nursing can you talk about some of the things that are the same or similar and some of the things that are different yeah, of course. So um, some of the things right offhand that are different is definitely um, when it comes down to scheduling. And when I say scheduling, of course, as a nurse, you know, you're going to have to work like those weekends, those night shifts and those holidays. Um, the only difference that comes in with that would be um, like the shift differential. So on the civilian side, a lot of times you'll get um, your shift differentials. Um, and then on the military side, that really doesn't happen at all because it's all like salary based. Um, and then another couple differences would be just the facilities that you work at. So on the civilian side, you'll just go straight to the hospital. On the military side, not only are you in a hospital, but of course you have to drive on base to get to work. Um, and then a lot of times, like some similarities I would say would still be floating. So you can still float to other units. Um, so I float down to the ED a couple times, labor and delivery and things like that. Um, another couple differences for me as far as my ICU is our patient census, so it's a little bit low. So a lot of times we don't even have to wear scrubs because we might only have like one patient or sometimes we don't even have a patient because we're seeing a very healthy population and they're not sick enough to even need to be in the ICU. Okay. So that's um, a couple differences right offhand. Okay. Um, and the, like a typical day for you, what is a typical day as a military ICU nurse? What would you say kind of starting off at what time and kind of end at one time? Is it like shift work? I know you kind of mentioned that. Yeah, it's definitely shift work. So, um, I'll just think back on a typical day shift. So I will get up, um, a little bit after four o'clock and get ready. My shifts, um, here on this base are from 6 AM to 6 PM. Um, I know, um, on some of the civilian hospitals, it's like seven A to seven P. So here it's six A to six P. So I'll get up a little bit after four. I'll get ready, um, completely dressed in uniform. And then I'll get to my hospital around 5:30, and then I will go to my unit. If let's say I do have a patient, put my lunch away, I'll get report, um, and then 
just kind of go from there. And like I said, it is shift work. We do have um, our lunch breaks. And um, one of the cool things, um, just to backtrack for a quick second, if we don't have a patient and I am at work because it's shift work and we're there for 12 hours, our leadership has approved us to take um, our PT time just so we can remain active. So we're able to use at least an hour and 30 minutes to go do PT, take a shower, and then come back to the unit. And that's, um, of course, if we don't have a patient. Okay. So if I did have a patient, of course, I'm there all day. And then I'll get off work around six and then just come back home and I'm free for the rest of the day. But I usually work um, two to three days a week. And then I have on call shifts where I have to be around in the local area in case something were to happen. Someone called out or we got like a really sick patient that had a crazy load and then they needed extra hands. So then I would get called back in. Okay. And for those who people who don't know what a critical care nurse is, can you explain like what is a critical care nurse? And I know you take care of the sickest patients in the hospital, but can you describe some of the things that you do on a day to day basis? Yeah, so some of the things um, that make a critical care nurse actually labeled as a critical care nurse, um, you're just, it's the high acuity of the patient that you take care of. So the medications that they're on, the certain drips, um, Levo, phenol, those types of things that can't, the patient cannot have on a regular floor. Um, so you're constantly like titrating uh, drips, the patient may be intubated and sedated. Um, the patient is just at such a high level of acuity. You're usually like a one-to-one -one with the patient. So you, it's yourself, respiratory, you know, the docs, everyone that's there constantly monitoring the patient. Um, so that just makes them more at higher acuity and have to be in the ICU versus on a general care floor. Okay. And for people out there that are interested in either in military nursing versus just a nurse in general, how can they become a military nurse versus a nurse? What kind of tips would you uh, give to them? Um, so some tips I would have if, um, if you're in nursing school and you're interested in being a military nurse, I would definitely um, start talking to a recruiter of your choice, whether it's you know Army for the Army Nurse Corps, Navy Nurse Corps, or Air Force Nurse Corps. I don't believe Marines has anything like that. Um, but I would definitely make sure that your grades are up to par, your GPA is up to par. Definitely try to start, if you haven't already, doing a lot of leadership activities that has yourself as the forerunner or at least kind of high up there in the leadership level, you know, organizing, speaking, anything that has to do with leadership where you can kind of highlight yourself as one of the main components of the activity. Yeah. Um, definitely get some good letters of recommendations and um, definitely start on your physical fitness if you're not already a super active person because all branches of the military are very, very big on physical fitness. Um, those are like the top tips I could think right now. Okay, and I have three last questions for you. Uh, you can answer one to two words. I'll try to ask this to all people that I interview. Uh, what is your favorite food? Oh man, um, I think my favorite food is, I'd say, um, Pizza from Papa John's with no cheese, add pineapples. That's a good choice. I love pineapples in my pizza. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite thing to do outside of working as a uh, nurse? Um, definitely travel. I love to travel. Okay. And if there was anything else in this world that you would uh, rather do, or if you had another option, another job to do, what would it be? If you couldn't do nursing, what would it be? Um, I would definitely be like a a freelance like travel blogger, travel photographer, something that would um, revolve around traveling. Okay, awesome. Well, Lieutenant Nichols, I'd like to thank you for taking the opportunity today to speak to everyone. Um, if someone wanted to reach out to you and ask some questions about military nursing, about just nursing in general, I understand you have a YouTube channel and I'll put a link to that in the uh, video, but uh, how can I, someone get in touch with you? Um, yes, um, you can definitely reach out to me on Instagram. So my Instagram is jvogue92. You can ask me questions, um, direct message that way. Um, like you stated, I do have a YouTube channel. And then um, you could also just shoot me like a quick email as well at jquinn92 at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, uh, joining me today. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone else watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'll, I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And also check out my new series, Careers in Medicine, 
where I'll be featuring professionals from all different types of careers in medicine. You don't want to miss those videos. We'll see you next time.